be able to copy songs that you have purchased onto your iPod or onto your cell phone and make backup digital copies of books or of photographs. This is commonly known as format shifting. Creators, publishers, producers, internet service providers, educators, and students. It relates to the books that we read, uh, the movies that we watch, the music that we listen to, and of course, uh, new technologies such as uh, MP3 players and memory sticks. In fact, it touches uh, each and every one of us, and it is no surprise to find so many different points of view with respect to copyright. Software companies and filmmakers, for example, we are providing stronger protection of digital locks online so that companies can choose whether to use them to use them in their business models uh, that will have the support of the law. Did the government think they could just put this through and no one would notice? Is that if you buy a CD or a DVD or even your cell phone, your ability to use some of those things if they're locked down would be really be restricted. So if you had a CD, say, that was copy protected and you want to listen to that music on your, iP on your iPod or your iPhone, suddenly you'd find that you're an infringer if you try to transfer the music. Same with a DVD, you buy a DVD, say, in Europe or in Asia, where it's region-coded to play only on DVD players in those regions. Yeah. You bring it home, you want to play it, suddenly you're infringing copyright. If you want to play it. Legislation actually represents a radical rewriting of Canadian copyright policy because the absolute legal protection for digital locks deliberately blurs the distinction between private use and counterfeit. So from here on in, the only consumer rights you will have are the ones the U.S. industry gives you. If you a win-win approach. Did the government think they could just put this through and no one would notice? Presents a win-win approach. Well, we've got a number of lobby groups that are largely based in the U.S., but I sometimes describe them as having Canadian camouflage. So you've got the Canadian Recording Industry Association, the Canadian Motion Picture Distributors Association, which you know, have a Canadian component but are clearly representing largely foreign interests, and they've been very vocal for a very long time. From here on in, the only consumer rights you will have are the ones the U.S. industry gives you, Canadian copyright policy, because the absolute legal protection for digital locks deliberately blurs the distinction between private use and counterfeit. So from here on in, the only consumer rights you will have are the ones the U.S. industry gives you. If you try and protect your rights, they will come after you. So it'll be legal to back up a movie to VHS, but not to a video iPod. How many 10-year-olds go around with a VHS recorder in their backpack? They aren't criminals. One recorder in their backpack. They aren't criminals. Why has this government declared war on Canadian consumers? Did the government think they could just put this through and no one would notice? Increasingly in the current environment, we all live in a digital world. We live in a world where we're blogging and posting things and on Facebook and doing all sorts of things that actually require us to have enough flexibility in the world so that we can really exercise our free speech and engage. Well, a lot of people think that part of the reason why this, um, this happened this way was a lot. 